interesting area. It's called remote viewing. Does anyone know what remote viewing is? Remote viewing? Anyone? Everyone's right. If you say something, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, remote viewing is a term that's um, I think coined by a guy called Russell Targ at the Stanford Research Institute in the early 70s in California. These guys um, were laser physicists who were pretty interested in psychic stuff. Um, and they went to um, um, some guys at NASA, including Werner von Braun, the Russian, no, Russian German, German rocket scientist. And they went and talked to these guys about some of the psychic research they wanted to do and get funding. They eventually got funding off NASA and through the CIA. The reason they got funding is um, the director of the CIA called them at their office and said, do you guys want funding? Well, we'll give you funding, but we want to be calling you on the phone every now and then and ask you certain things about what the Russians are doing if you're going to do this research, because we want to know what the Russians are doing, because we know that the Russians, I think, are doing psychic research too, and we need to understand this and know how to combat it. Most research into any of this sort of area generally came from a motivation of, of, of fear of what the Russians were developing. Okay? So there's a huge amount of money available if you were able to militarise anything you're doing. So the director of the CIA called them and he said, so you want funding? Well, tell me what's in my hand. And they had this great guy out there who was with them called um, Ingo Swan. Ingo Swan's a pretty famous psychic. I said, Ingo, what's the guy holding in his hand? He said, oh, he's holding a jewel of data. And that's how it works. First thing come through. You're not going to sit there and think about it. First, first thing, first thing come through. He's holding a jewel of data. And the, the director of the CIA is like, cool, thanks. You got the funding. Right? So this is how it works. All right? So they had a psychic policeman who had a lot of, um, called, um, oh, Patrick, someone, I can't remember his name. But he was a policeman that had a lot of, success in finding lost children and finding bodies and stuff like that, people who disappeared. They had him and they had Ingo Swan. Ingo Swan was a very incredible psychic. And so they had these guys who were psychic anyway. And Yuri Geller was Yuri Geller studied as well? Almost. Almost. Not quite there yet. Um, so they had these guys and they, they started to work out these protocols for how to, you deal with it. You, someone interviews someone and the idea is you have these tests which are double blind. You have an envelope and the interviewer doesn't know what's in the envelope and the person's like, so you know, what's, what's in the envelope in the other room? And they're like, oh, and you start drawing it. So they worked out these protocols, how to stay ahead of the analytical overlay in your mind. So, let's do something here. Analytical overlay is interesting in the sense that we can get really good readings about what something is. And, um, but then our electrical mind, so let's say it's a teapot, and we kind of have, we, we might start drawing the handle, and then we start drawing something on the top, and we start drawing the spout, and we're like, oh, it's a teapot. And straight away we've named it. Maybe it's not a teapot, maybe it's just got a handle, or maybe it's got a spout, maybe it's something completely different. But our electrical overlay names things, it names them, it names them, and then it, it, this gets in the way, and they call this AOL. So often with remote viewing, when someone gets too analytical, they take a little break, and then they reset, and then they go, okay, cool. All right, go again. What's at these coordinates? And often they, they will get given coordinates from the CIA in Russia. You know, what's happening here? We know there's something happening here. And they would go have these experiences at these coordinates. And then the incredible thing about this, one example with um, one of the guys, they, he went to these coordinates in Russia, and he's in, this, he's in this kind of valley, and there's a huge gantry rolling up and down. There's this huge sphere and all this sort of stuff. And they're just like, oh, this seems so far out. And he just drew it all perfectly. And years later, they got the satellite photos of exactly that. So they don't even know if they're going to be right or not. Okay? All right? So it's, it's really, 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 really far out. And what they start doing is like, okay, we've got these psychics. They're great. They're getting really good responses. What about regular people? So they started going, going around the university, SRI, and pulling people out of offices and going, sitting down and going, what's in the other room? What's in the box in the other room? They pulled this one woman out of her office, and she turned out to be the best remote viewer they've ever, ever had. And she's just, and that was the interesting thing, is you get people who might be very naive of the information of what they're doing, and they'll just go, there's no agenda, they're just like, oh, this, that, I don't know. So the really good thing for remote viewing is to realise that you might, let's say you get given a complex object, let's say this bottle. 
Let's say you see this little cone shaped here. Maybe you draw a little cone, and maybe you draw one ring, and then you draw another ring, and then you draw a smaller ring, maybe with another little ring. Maybe you just draw that. All right? But don't, you don't want to identify that it's a, a whiskey bottle from Tasmania. Um, so you might get all the components of the image, and then you can actually realize that you can put them together and all. Oh, shit, I was pretty close. So you don't want to identify the object. You want to draw what's coming through first. And you want to see how that object makes you feel, what it makes you think. Because when you start to interact with an object somewhere else, you're also bringing yourself to the object. And this is why it's very dangerous to, in, to remote view people, because they're going to influence you back through as well. And it can be very um, strange when you do that. Um, so you've got to be careful. So the remote viewing program got more and more developed where they had a team, and everyone would remote view the same thing, and then I'd draw a conclusion from the whole group. Okay? And then, again, the era of high strangeness came up in, in physics, where they brought Yuri Geller out of Israel, and they brought him to SRI, and sh shit got really weird, because they would put him in a Faraday cage. This is like a lead room, and they would do double-blind tests. They have ten envelopes. No one knows what's in the envelopes. What's in the envelopes has been chosen by a random number generator. He'll be in there, and he'll, they'll be like, all right, envelope six, and you just draw what's in the envelope six. Envelope seven, he was getting 100%. So this is a guy from Ben Spoons and everything like that. And they called this the area high, of high strangers in physics because the top experts in physics, in this sort of physics work, in, at the time, early 70s, in Russia and the United States. And Yuri Geller came in and basically just blew them out of the water with things that shouldn't be able to be done. He could manifest coins as well. Yeah, so he could do a lot of different things. Like, here's an example. They got the top metallurgists, like metal experts, to come see Yuri, because he could bend spoons, you know. And he would go, okay, cool, all right. Um, has anyone got a key? Yeah, where's your key? Where's your key? You'd put, get someone to put their key on their hand. He wouldn't touch it. And he'd be like, okay. And he'd reach out and start, then he'd touch it, and he'd just stroke it a little bit with his index finger, and then stand back. And then the key would just curl up like a banana. And this is people who study this sort of thing. What's possible with metal? And it would just curl up like that. And... People lost their mind a bit. So he started getting moved around labs all over North America, all over the world, and this sort of thing where they were, he was being tested on these psychokinetic functions, psychokinesis sort of stuff, and also the ability to remote view. And it, it, really, it really messed around with people's heads. And a lot of people start to deny what they saw. So these guys might get back together. Remember that time we tested your galaxy with the thing with your key? And one of them might be like, oh, that didn't happen. It must have been some kind of mind trick or something like that. So people go into a disbelief into what they really experience. They just go into denial and a real um, cognitive dissonance, complete denial of being shown something which goes against your life's research, often creates a, a natural faculty in the black brain where we shut down because we can't accept that um, what we believe may not be true because so many of these scientists associate and literally bind their ego to their research and then they can't actually look at anything alternative. So, remote viewing. Now, the best thing to do with remote viewing is to not identify, don't identify, don't identify, don't identify, don't think. What's the first thing that comes to you? What's the first thing you see? What's the first thing you feel? Okay? So in this room, under a cloth, is an item, is an object. And it's a, it's a reasonably complex object, um, but it's also reasonably simple. And um, so as much as you can, close your eyes, clear your mind, and don't really think about anything. And just, it's somewhere in this room. And the best way to do remote viewing is double blind. That would mean I don't know what it is either. That would be the best way if we're in a lab, but we're not in a lab. So in this room, you've got a bit of paper, you've got a pen there. Just take a few minutes, and I want you to draw what you feel this object looks like, feels like, smells like, whatever you want. But don't try and identify what it is. Just completely move past that. Just, just um. Just draw away, see what happens. So it's a, it's a hexagon with a square in it. And it's got some patterns written on the top, but actually some of, some of your patterns are written on the top. It's, it's got a drawing on the top and it comes around. And then whoever's got a, um, anyone who's got a square or a cube. Deb, is that you? I don't think I drew a 
Who drew the little um, three-dimensional um, uh, disc? Mine had, mine had so three-dimensional um, little um, cube here. Who drew that? That's pretty good. That's half of it. Bang on. Yeah. So there's a, there's a tile. It's a hexagonal box with a square tile in it. So often with with remote viewing, is you might get half of it, and then if you're working as a team, then enough people will get the um, the rest of the information. And if you get a big enough group, you can draw a conclusion about what's going on. It's really far out stuff, but that's how it works, and that's how they were doing it in these universities. And they were hammering it and getting really and really incredible results just by trying and trying and trying again. And it's just an amazing, amazing thing, especially when you're really dealing with. Um, finding people as well. And there's elements in the US military now that, are, that have got such a really good system that they can find anything on the planet. They've got a way of working with the GPS, they can find anything. And they've got such a good team. But essentially that's how it all started, is doing stuff like this. And then after the end of the Cold War, they compared notes with the Russians, and the Russians are doing the same thing. And there's an amazing book called The um, uh, Psychic um, Secrets, or Psychic something, um, Psychic Revelations Behind the Iron Curtain. And it goes right into all that. Did they use it to find people? That's, that's right. There's, especially they were using it in, in that part of um, the Bay Area, California, San Francisco. They were using it a lot to find people. Yeah. And that's what they're having a lot of success with. And they'll just close their eyes and look at landmarks and just go boom. You know, they, they would try not to identify the landmarks. So they'd have someone else sketch it or they would just draw and see this bridge or this building, you know, and they'd work out where it was. So a really good book to read is The um, Reality of ESP by Dr. Russell Targan. It's all about that research and about all the incredible experiments they did that were, again, proven right later on, you know?